This is Rishab. All right. Thanks, Kate. Hello. Um, morning, everyone. I'm Rishab. I work as a product designer on the VMware Cloud on Dell team. I'm going to walk you through a demo of, of the service. And uh, let's start from the very beginning. Um, as a customer, you would log into our VMware Cloud Services account, and you'd have access to a couple of services, uh, VMware Cloud on Dell being one of these services that Kit just uh, talked about. In addition to these services, you might also have access to other services like VMware Cloud on AWS. Um, so uh, when you get access to these services, you can um, log in with your Cloud Services credentials and uh, go into the service to perform some of the operations. So. Uh, here you are actually at the at the uh, sort of the landing page of the service, and uh, the first sort of trigger point for the customer is to start adding their SDC location where they want to have the rack delivered, and um, VMware would work with Dell behind the scenes to have it uh, deployed with the latest version of SDC and delivered at your SDC location. Um, there are some documentations that the customers can review uh, so that they know what are the prerequisites of ordering an SDC. So let's go ahead and, and go into the process. Uh, I'm going to provide an STDC name here. Um, an address. So again, this gets back to this cloud model concept, right? You're going into cloud.vmware.com. That's your entry point to the service. You don't have to talk to anyone. I mean, you, you can talk to us. You can call us if you want to. but. The whole point here is this is, can all be fully automated, fully API-based, or in this case, web UI-based. And the URL has cloud, so it's obviously yeah, cloud. Yeah, obviously. Right? So. <laughs> <coughs> uh, so once the location is added, um, it takes us into this ordering process. Um, in terms of the rack that the customers can, can choose, there is a 110 and 220 volt option depending on what they have at their edge or data center location. So after making a selection of one of these racks, um, the next step is to sort of choose the number of hosts that they would want. Also, uh, let's talk, can you go back? Let's talk through that just really quickly just to make sure everyone sees. So <clears throat> what we're doing here, you can imagine, um, again, like cloud, we have instance types. So we were getting extremely prescriptive, right? Even, even a bit more prescriptive than what we saw with VxRail and VCF, right? Really narrowing it down. And so we have instance types not only for hosts, but also for racks. And so this rack here, as you can see, holds a certain number of hosts. As it turns out, we also will have a dark host there as well that we keep in spare for upgrades and other things. But these are the customer visible ones. And so you can see some information in terms of what type of voltage you need and so forth. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so the next step is number of hosts. Um, as Kit was saying, uh, there are three to five hosts that the customers can choose right now. Uh, we're going to soon add another option, which would be a full sort of data center sized rack for D2U. Uh, the rack that we saw just now is a half rack. Um, for many customers, they think that this rack might be a good use case for their edge locations, but not so much for the data center. So we'll add that option of R2 soon. And we only have one host type now as well, right? So over time, you can, like when EC2 first came out, I think they had three host types, now they have. But you host. can control it this way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and so this is the great thing about this is it allows us to be very prescriptive about it. Right. And we're not dogmatic, right? We, you know, we, we have some ideas about where we, where we want to go, but really it's based on customer feedback. Right. If customers over, overwhelmingly say, hey, we need some GPUs in these things, well, we can create a GPU-enabled one. Right. Or if they want say, hey, we want different trade-offs between storage and, and, and compute size, we can go do that, right? So it's really based on customer feedback. Uh, yes, the other option that would be soon in the, in the uh, host instance type would be a storage intensive option. So the customers can choose a general purpose or a storage intensive uh, host instance. Um, so choosing the number of hosts here, uh, we continue to the next step where we ask customers to provide some of the IP subnets required to configure the network so that we can remotely manage their STDC, perform lifecycle management. So the customers would enter a couple of IP subnets over here. I'm just going to um, copy these settings that I have over here. Um, the VeloCloud IP address uh, would be used for us to enter their on-prem location and be able to, uh, through a secure SD-WAN uh, tunnel that gets created from VMware Cloud to their location, and that allows us to uh, get into, into the rack. 
Um, <clears throat> the art of bands management subnet is for access to the physical devices, so access to the iDRAC interfaces uh, for the VxRail servers. And the STDC management subnet is the most familiar subnet which most of our customers are, are aware of. This is the management um, network of vCenter, ESX hosts, um, and other uh, management appliances like NSX. Can I ask one quick question? Please. When I'm filling this stuff out, do, these are prereqs, right? So all of these constructs need to be in place. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing DHCP at a remote location, DHCP services should be instantiated at some point by the customer. Mm -hmm. What if they don't have those? Can you guys control that layer of providing those services within the VX rail, within that stack itself? Yeah. So if I don't want yeah. to, as a customer, say, I don't want to manage DHCP pools, I don't want to manage that, mm -hmm. all this other, all these other yeah. constructs of infrastructure, can you guys provide that? I mean, I know you can, technically. It's back to a whole process <laughs> versus technical problem. Uh, hi, I'm Anil, a product manager uh, here at uh, VMware. In, in particular, for this particular right. setting, uh, we can. We can actually allow them to go either DHCP or static, and right. the customer can configure that if right. they don't have that service. Right. Mm -hmm. but you, so we but do you, offer that flexibility. So, but, but, so if the, they don't have it, you can say, okay, we're going to control the, that's right. the provisioning. Awesome. Yep. Okay, yep. thank you. This looks remarkably a lot like the VMC spin up uh, process yeah. and everything. Are you guys going to tie that in together? Are these going to be integrated um, mm -hmm. so that you'll have both your pain for your, your on prem and then be able to flip? Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, so the, the vision is absolutely to have a single pane of glass where you can see right. all your SCDCs in the cloud, on prem, VMC types, VCF types. Uh, partner types, regular vSphere. We want, we want a, a place to see all those and be able to manage all those holistically. Gotcha. Cool. Okay, thanks. I have a question on <laughs> SLA. Sure. Uh, uh, so because it's supposed to be at a customer site, yep. uh, whatever the size of the deployment, uh, do you, what kind of SLA do you support? Because if something goes wrong, I, I trust that there is, there is going to be some hardware somewhere as well uh, that can be yeah. delivered in quickly. So how, what, what is the SLA on the kit? Yeah. So, <laughs> so right now, so we just, by, by the way, the V1 of this just went out, I think, what, two weeks ago now? Mm -hmm. um, it got released. And so we're, we're definitely easing into that, looking at what we can do from a contractual SLA standpoint. The SLA as it stands right now is predicated around response time. Um, we're, we don't yet have, uh, we're not sure when, when well, sorry, directionally we want to get to a nines based availability number. But we're not quite there yet. So we got to prove out this, this technology and this approach before we're willing to say, hey, we can give you three nines or four nines or whatever it is, right? No, I also meant basically in terms of, you know, uh, break fix. For yeah, example, yeah. so there's a, there's a response time that we yeah. have there to, to go and fix that. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and real quick on camera, how, how soon until uh, this is available for government? How soon until it's available for government? Uh, we can't talk about those timelines yet, but directionally, we, we want to get there. So again, you have to understand that what we're doing here is actually fairly complex. It's hard enough to run a reliable service within a fully controlled environment. And what we're doing now is really gone, it's a little bit wild west, right? We're delivering this hardware into all sorts of random places, data centers, edge locations, you know, the back of a retail store, where a person puts their coffee on the top of the rack and spills it on it. You know, we don't know what's gonna happen out there. So we're being very careful about how we roll this out. Rather than kind of being a jack of all trades, a master of none, we want to really focus. And you know, so we start off with the lower hanging fruit, the simpler use cases, and then over time, you know, build up on top of that. So yeah, we absolutely want to get all the accreditation we need to to go into government accounts, and so on and so forth. Um, so again, it's just it's really a question of time and maturity. I just wanted to actually follow up on the break fix. Okay. We have a tight integration with Dell. When if something were to break, VMware Cloud would become aware that that break happened. Right. We would then dispatch out to Dell. Mm. Dell would then white glove the replacement of that host. And in the interim, the question, what happens in the interim while that host is being shipped out? Mm -hmm. We have that dark node that we can right. bring back up right. so that the environment is back stable as soon as possible. And that's now currently today available in all regions, I say, I don't know. In the US. Europe, in, the in the US. US. <laughs> so again, starting small. All right, OK. We know we, know we cover, the Dell covers the US. Because again, a lot of it's physical response time. How, how quickly can we physically get a person in parts right. to that location? And so. We, we know we can do that well in the US, so we're starting there. And again, as we prove this out and prove 
uh, to our customers and to ourselves, this thing works and can work at scale, then yeah, we, I mean, there's tremendous interest across the world. I was just, you know, just in China there as well. Um, and so it's kind of all over, right? But we want to start in one place, really get it working, then expand different regions, government, et cetera. And yeah. 